Samuel Melvin kept a diary. It was a simple resolution for New Year's 1864, inspired by the death of one of his brothers. Maybe someday, after Samuel too had passed to the spirit life, someone might take pleasure in reading his diary. Then in May 1864, Samuel Melvin was captured and shipped to Andersonville. Throughout his suffering, that resolution to keep a diary stood fast. He described the sheer horror of that patch of ground. He recorded daily events. He described the emotional roller coaster of life behind the stockade walls, the hopes, the dreams, the friends he made, and the friends he lost. He waited desperately for the sound of a train that would carry him home. Finally, in early September, he heard that sound he'd longed for. How I like to hear the old cars roll for it portends a great deal, he wrote on September 10th. Samuel's dream was coming true. He embarked on a train that slowly pulled away from hell on earth. He thought he was on his way home. However, just a few miles down the track, the train crashed. Samuel survived the wreck, but returned to Andersonville. Then, before he could get on another train, Samuel Melvin was crippled with severe diarrhea and went to the prison camp's hospital. On September 15, 1864, while lying on a flea-ridden blanket in the hospital, he wrote in his diary for the last time, As things look now, I stand a good chance to lay my bones in old Georgia, but I'd hate to as bad as one can, for I want to go home. Throughout his captivity, he chronicled the deaths of his close friends and family, his brother Asa at Petersburg, George Handy, Edwin Holt, Asa Rowe, Ivory Emery, Joe Learned. However, the death that Samuel narrated in his diary was his own. He died on September 25th, 1864. Four Melvin brothers marched off to war, but only the youngest, James, returned home. Devastated by the loss of his brothers, James erected a monument to their memory in the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery in Concord, Massachusetts. Standing in that cemetery at the Melvin Memorial's dedication were many of Samuel's comrades, including Lucius Wilder, who had saved Samuel's diary, a final relic of a life lived and lost. Samuel's wish that someone might one day find pleasure and comfort in his diary came true. The diary was published as part of that dedication ceremony to the Melvin Memorial. Each soldier lost here at Andersonville was a person, a family member, and a friend. Samuel's voice is one of thousands, and today, in that future day, long after Samuel passed to the spirit life, we all can call him family, grieve with his loved ones, and take pleasure in looking over the words that he wrote.